There are various situations where photographers want to avoid to catch attention with their camera and lens under all circumstances. And I mentioned two examples here. The first one is clearly in travel photography. If you are taking photos in areas, regions, neighborhoods, cities where it is maybe dangerous or at least unsecure, you don't want to really catch attention with your camera if you take photos there. And the second is in general in street photography because you want to have a non-intrusive equipment. If we think about what the word non-intrusive means, it typically has to do with size and with noise. Now, if you're on street, clearly your shutter noise will not distract people a lot, but you could also go for silent or electronic shutter. But size really matters if you wanna have a non-intrusive combo of a camera body and a lens. And in the next, uh, let's say, couple of weeks, I wanna discuss two combos which I personally find intriguing and fully convincing for these two situations. Traveling in areas where you don't wanna catch attention and uh, street photography where you wanna appear as a non-intrusive photographer. The first combo of camera body and lens for non-intrusive photography I wanna talk about is the Leica SL2. And the lens I've mounted here is from Sigmar. It's from their contemporary line and it's 45 millimeters, so close to a normal focal length of 50 millimeters, but slightly wider. Widest open aperture is an f2.8 and it has these uh, letter combinations which show that this is for a full frame sensor calculated here. And that lens is super lightweight, super compact. And if you remove the lens hood actually, it gets even smaller. And by construction, this lens doesn't even necessarily need a lens hood, I think. So uh, you can probably make this shorter by keeping the lens hood off. In many situations, I keep it on, but you know, it's a matter of taste and how non-intrusive you wanna have it at the very end. And then the second combo I wanna discuss is the Hasselblad X1D Mark II. And the lens I have mounted here is the newly developed 45P lens. So it's 45 millimeters in the cropped medium format, which means on a full frame equivalent, we have about 36 millimeters here because the crop factor is 0.79. And that lens is by far the most compact, most lightweight lens you can get in the XCD lens lineup from Hasselblad for the X1D, for the X1D Mark II and the 907X. Talking about non-intrusive, if you go for a Leica combo like this with a Sigma lens, it is compact and small in particular if we remove the lens hood here. So it is non-intrusive and compact from a size perspective, but these Leica logos and engravings here, they catch a lot of attention. So what I recommend is, and I actually did this in particular when traveling in Africa, just get black stickers on top of the Leica engraving here and a black sticker in a circular form on top of the red Leica logo here. And then it's no longer recognizable as a Leica camera from a distance. And you need to be an expert or pro, which is unlikely in some countries that people recognize this as a super expensive equipment here. Since a lot of people let me know by comments or by mails that they are interested in the best quality combo of a camera body and a lens for non-intrusive photography, I will review both combos in the next couple of weeks. And I will start in this video with the X1D Mark II and then the Leica SL2 combo with that Sigma lens will follow. If we put them just side by side for a moment, they are very much comparable. The SL2 is slightly bigger from a dimension perspective, but if you call the Hasselblad combo non-intrusive, you can safely also claim that the SL2 combo is non-intrusive. And from a focal length perspective, if we look at the lenses, we have some differences here and there is a reason why I have differences here. So first of all, I mentioned already in a full frame world, this would correspond to a 36 millimeter lens. This is on full frame 45 millimeters. If I wanted to have the same focal length, I would probably go for the Aposumicron 35 millimeter, but that is no longer non-intrusive. That is actually a heavy piece of technology. I could go for a Leica M lens, but then I don't have autofocus any longer. And I wanted to have autofocus on both combos because many people appreciate that. So my choice was go for 45 millimeters with that really compact, lightweight Sigma lens and go for 45 millimeters in medium format on the Hasselblad but in the full frame equivalent, this corresponds to 36 millimeters. Let's now put the Leica Sigma combo aside and let's focus exclusively on the Hasselblad X1D Mark II with the 45P XCD lens and let's kick off the review.
At the beginning of my review, I want to remark that I had an intense email discussion with a subscriber to my channel. His name is Jacques and I believe he's from Berlin. And uh, we started to engage in a discussion about street photography in Israel. And in Israel, you should know, cameras are not liked in all places. So you really want to be non-intrusive in your equipment. And uh, I promised to him to make that review because it interests me anyway. I know it shoot a lot with that combo already. Also, this lens is difficult to get from retailers in Switzerland as well as in Germany. So it took me a long time when my order was placed somewhere in summer to finally receive it somewhere in fall. And uh, I think this lens here is probably the most interesting lens in the XCD lineup for various reasons. And the first reason to mention is it's much cheaper than all the other XCD lenses. The price tag of this lens is $1,200. And its closest relative is much more expensive. So you should know that there is a 45 millimeter XCD lens and a 45P XCD lens. And the 45P is the affordable one, $1,200. The other one is much more expensive. The main difference besides size, this one is much smaller, is if you look into the aperture here, the widest open aperture here is an F4. And on the other 45 millimeter lens, it's an F3.5. And if you ask me honestly, on this medium format sensor, is there a big difference between widest open f3.5 to f4? No, not at all. So you can easily go for that lens if you're looking for a 45 millimeter lens for the X1D camera system and you don't have a 45 millimeter lens yet. Then this is, I think, the best value package you can get. The second point I need to make on the lens is its fantastic build quality. And the build quality here is the same what you know from all other XCD lenses, despite the fact that this lens is much cheaper, several thousands cheaper than the next most expensive XCD lens. And uh, I think the focus ring has just the right resistance. It works exactly in the way it should work, but it's not focusing inside the tube of the lens. And you see this here when I start to focus, then you see here how the tube is coming out. So it's not an inside the tube focusing mechanism. The lens is not officially weather sealed, but it has at its mount the same rubber sealing like all other XCD lenses I know. So I think this will withstand the elements easily. Now, I wanna illustrate a few things here on that camera. And uh, for this, I adjusted my display in a way that I have the distance scale. So you can here get now under the newest firmware, the distance scale. And if I switch to manual focus, I see the reaction to my rotation of the focus ring if you look into that. So you see that little triangle here moving from now infinity to the closest distance, which is 0.35 meters. If I focus, let's say to infinity, get my hands off the focus ring and show you where it is from now on, if I continue to further focus beyond infinity, there is a significant resistance in the focus ring here. And it clearly indicates to me, it's much harder now to rotate that I already came to a hard stop at infinity and there's nothing more to focus beyond infinity. And it's also making a noise. If you look at the distance scale now at infinity, I try to illustrate this now. So I think you heard this. And the same happens in the other direction. So if I go to close distance now, 35 centimeters, and I continue to focus here to a closer distance, which is no longer possible by the construction of the lens, the resistance kicks in on the focus ring. And again, there is this noise. Let's go back a little bit. I actually think that's a very nice feature to have. Let's call it a soft stop where some click or noise indicates to me that I'm at the end of the distance scale that there is nothing to focus beyond these two boundary points here and that it also shows that resistance in the focus ring. What I want to do now is show some sample images in Lightroom and basically discuss the outcome, what you get when you shoot with that combo here. And clearly you have a combination of a fantastic sensor with a fantastic lens and that should actually make photographers very, very happy. But before I do that, I want to quickly have a look into the spec sheet of the lens and want to point out a few more things. And then we go into Lightroom and have a look at the sample images coming out of that non-intrusive combo for street or travel photography. On the spec sheet, I only want to make a few points here. And the first is that the physical focal length is actually slightly longer. It's 46.2 millimeters and not 45 as it is written on the lens itself. 
but the full frame equivalent as I pointed out before is 36 millimeters based on a crop factor of 0.79. The next point I want to make here up to my knowledge this is the lightest in terms of weight medium format camera lens you can get currently on planet earth. So it has 320 gram. There is I think only one lens which I know in the medium format world which is the GF 50mm f 3.5 from Fuji for the GFX system which actually has 335 grams so comparable weight but slightly heavier but only a tiny little bit and that is probably the one which comes closest in the medium format world to a Hasselblad lens we are currently discussing here. Then the other point I want to make is we have a maximum image scale of 1 to 5.2 in many lens spec sheets this number is called the maximum reproduction ratio and that's roughly 20% that means that lens if you go close to 35 centimeters which is the minimum focus distance actually is also good for close-up shots and that's all I wanted to mention here. I shot a lot with that combo X1D Mark II and the Hasselblad 45P in the last weeks and uh, I have here one series of samples where I selected a few to illustrate a few points and first of all when we talk about street photography but that's not the topic of this video of course I'm always curious and asking myself what actually is going on in the scene and if you look at that scene here which has been shot at an ISO of 100 and an f 5.6 1 over 90 seconds what is going on here what are these guys talking about and uh, what is their topic that I think is very interesting in the same way as this parallel scene which is clearly totally unrelated where something is going on and I think that's the nature of street photography capturing a moment which will pass by never come back but you have it somewhere on your sensor or on your I should say probably on your memory card and I think that's the nice character of street photography spontaneous photos of things that happen in front of you this car here caught my attention. So this car was parking in downtown Zurich and it really caught my attention when I saw that color. It's actually from an engine perspective a very nice car. So this is a Mercedes AMG V8 by turbo and clearly I had to take that image here. This is again an ISO of 100 and I should say that F5.6 is my personal most favorite aperture on that 45p Hasselblad lens here. Here you see how sharp the lens is corner to corner. And this is one of the, I think, most taken photos in Zurich. Nothing to write home about. It is always nice to take that photo, but really nothing uh, not other people are doing in the same way. But if you look at the clock here on the towers and you go to the corners, you see that this lens is really delivering sharpness and goodness corner to corners. Absolutely fascinating for a price tag of $1,200 in a medium format world. Really, really cool. Again, this is at base ISO 100. We are approaching now the evening hours and my ISO value will go up and become higher. F5.6 ISO 400 here and I like that scene. This is in front of the Zurich Opera because that child here in the foreground looks kind of isolated from the rest of the world. And some people are watching like here on the left hand side, maybe it's the mother or someone who knows the child, I don't know, but it's again I think a very interesting scene. On the next uh, scene here we have a guy who is almost always on weekends in Zurich and doing soap bubbles. And this is again ISO 400, I think this is again a very good performance of the lens, look at that child here how she's wondering what's going on in the scene in front of her. And what I also want to mention is the color reproduction of that combination of X1D Mark II sensor with the lens is really good. So you see nicely the rainbow colors here in the soap bubbles. On the next scene we are going up in ISO value. This is an ISO of 800. And again I think the performance of the lens is stunning. Look at the face of the women. There is no noise, no grain. It looks really good. Also here on the price tags for what you can purchase there looks really really good. Here is now a scene with an ISO of 3200 and clearly when I mention ISO over and over again that is mainly a property of the sensor, how the sensor is dealing with higher sensitivity electronically amplified on the sensor but the lens is sitting on top of the sensor and every light ray has to pass through the lens onto the sensor and clearly your autofocus behavior can be influenced by lower light situations and also the reproduction of light and details can be influenced by the lens and that's why I'm looking here also into higher ISO images 
And this image here looks again really good. The details on that image are very, very good. You see some noise kicking in now, which is, as I said, the property of the sensor. But the reproduction of details and what's in front of me, despite the lower light, and the image looks much brighter than it actually was in the real life scene, is really good. Sharpness corner to corner, if you look into that image, that lens is delivering from all angles. And then the last point I wanted to look in is portraits and background blurriness. And the next two images are actually taken with the widest open aperture of f4. And if you look into the background blurriness here and the background lights, you see the shape is almost perfectly circular. And that's what you want to have. It's a property influenced by the way the aperture blades are arranged on the lens. And this looks really, really good on the 45p. If we look into the face of my model here, you see again the sharpness delivered in that image and the focus is sitting exactly where it should sit, namely on the left hand eye of my model and the right hand eye is already getting a little bit blurred out. Here is the sharpness and the autofocus, which is not a quick autofocus on the X1D and the X1D Mark II. I don't think these are cameras for sports and action. There are much better cameras which I can use if I need quick autofocus, but it is a reliable autofocus. It might take a little longer, but when it sits, it sits. And that's what you see here on the eye of my model. And then the last image along the same lines, again, looking into the result of a good arrangement of aperture plates on the lens, perfectly circular or spherical background lights here. And then again, super sharp, crispy image sitting where the focus should sit, namely on the eye, looking into the camera. We are now at the end of the video. The review on the Leica SL2 with that Sigma lens will come in the next days. And I do not intend at this point in time to compare side by side images and footage coming from these two combos. But if I would see that there is a huge number of views and a lot of interest on both of these reviews, and if you know my subscriber numbers climb up into astronomical order of magnitude, I might want to do a third video and compare footage side by side between the crop medium format Hasselblad X1D sensor and the Leica SL2 full frame sensor with these two different lenses. Because the focal length is different on both lenses, it's kind of a difficult comparison, but nevertheless, it might provide some insights. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me your thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. There's always more content every week. It's all for free. And uh, in the meanwhile, stay safe and healthy and peace out, of course.